He pulled out a straw mat and laid down, propping his head up with a bundle. He made himself comfortable, and then he told me there was another thing I had to perform if I really wanted to learn about plants. What was wrong with you when I saw you, and what is wrong with you now, is you don't like to take responsibility for what you do. When a man decides to do something, he must go all the way, but he must take responsibility for what he does. No matter what he does, he must know first why is he doing it, then he must proceed with his actions without having doubts or remorse about them. He examined me. I didn't know what to say. Finally, I ventured an opinion, almost a protest. That's an impossibility, I said. He asked me why, and I said that perhaps that's what everybody thinks they should do. In practice, however, there's no way to avoid doubts and remorse. Of course there's a way. Look at me. I have no doubts or remorse. Everything I do is my decision and my responsibility. The simplest things I do, to take you for a walk in the desert, for instance, may very well mean my death. Death is stalking me. Therefore, I have no room for doubts or remorse. If I have to die as a result of taking you for a walk, then I must die. You, on the other hand, feel you are mortal, and the decisions of an immortal man can be canceled or regretted or doubted. In a world where death is the hunter, my friend, there is no time for regrets or doubts. There is only time for decisions. I told him the story of my father, who used to give me endless lectures about the wonders of a healthy mind and a healthy body. He was a young man. When I was eight years old, he was only 27. During the summertime, as a rule, he would come from the city where he taught school to spend at least a month with me at my grandparents' farm where I lived. It was a hellish month for me. I told Don Juan one instance of my father's behavior that I thought would apply to the situation at hand. Almost immediately upon arriving at the farm, my father would insist on taking a long walk with me at his side so he could talk things over. And while we were talking, he would make plans for us to go swimming every day at 6 a.m. At night, he would set the alarm for 5.30 to have plenty of time because at 6 sharp, we had to be in the water. And when the alarm would go off in the morning, he would jump out of bed, put on his glasses, go to the window and look out. I had even memorized the ensuing dialogue. Mmm, a bit cloudy today. Listen, I'm going to lie down just for five minutes, okay? No more than five. I'm just going to stretch my muscles and fully wake up. He would invariably fall asleep again until 10, sometimes until noon. I told Don Juan that what annoyed me was his refusal to give up his obviously phony resolutions. He would repeat the ritual every morning until I would finally hurt his feelings by refusing to set the alarm clock. They were not phony resolutions, Don Juan said, obviously taking the side of my father. He just didn't know how to get out of bed, that's all. At any rate, I said, I'm always leery of unreal resolutions. What would make a resolution that is real then? Don Juan asked me with a coy smile. If my father would have said to himself that he could not go swimming at six in the morning, but perhaps at three in the afternoon. Your resolutions injure the spirit, Don Juan said with an air of great seriousness. We were quiet for a long time. My peevishness had vanished, and I thought of my father. He did not want to swim at three in the afternoon, don't you see, Don Juan said. I told him that my father was weak, and so was his world of ideal acts that he never performed. I was almost shouting. Don Juan did not say a word. He shook his head slowly in a rhythmical way. I felt terribly sad. Thinking of my father always gave me a consuming feeling. You think you were stronger, don't you? He asked in a casual tone. I said I did, and I began to tell him all the emotional turmoil that my father had put me through, but he interrupted me. Was he mean to you? No. Was he petty with you? No. Did he do all he could for you? Yes. Then what was wrong with him? Again, I began to shout that he was weak, but I caught myself and lowered my voice. I felt a bit ludicrous being cross-examined by Don Juan. What are you doing this all for, I said. We were supposed to be talking about plants. I felt more annoyed and despondent than ever. I told him that he had no business or the remotest qualifications to pass judgment on my behavior, and he exploded into a belly laugh. When you get angry, you always feel righteous, don't you? He said and blinked like a bird. He was right. I had a tendency to feel justified at being angry. 
Let's not talk about my father, I said, feigning a happy mood. Let's talk about plants. No, let's talk about your father. That's the place to begin today. If you think that you were so much stronger than he, why didn't you go swimming at six in the morning in his place? I told him I couldn't believe he was seriously asking me that. I had always thought that swimming at six o'clock in the morning was my father's business, not mine. It was also your business from the moment you accepted his idea. Don't want snapped at me. I said that I never accepted it, that I knew my father was not truthful to himself. Don't want asked me matter-of-factly why I had not voiced my opinions at the time. You are complaining. You have been complaining all your life because you don't assume responsibility for your decisions. If you would have assumed responsibility for your father's idea of swimming at six in the morning, you would have swum, by yourself if necessary, or you would have told him to go to hell the first time he opened his mouth after you knew his devices. But you didn't say anything. Therefore, you were just as weak as your father. To assume the responsibility of one's decisions means that one is ready to die for them. Wait, wait, I said. You're twisting this around. He did not let me finish. I was going to tell him I had used my father only as an example of an unrealistic way of acting, and thus nobody in his right mind would be willing to die for such an idiotic thing. It doesn't matter what the decision is. Nothing could be more or less serious than anything else. Don't you see? In the world where death is the hunter, there are no small or big decisions. There are only decisions that we make in the face of our death. Why do you tell me all this, Don Juan? Why are you doing this to me? You came to me. No, that's not the case. You were brought to me, and I have had a gesture with you. You could have made a gesture with your father by swimming for him, but you didn't. Perhaps you were too young. I have lived longer than you. I have nothing pending. There is no hurry in my life. Therefore, I can properly have a gesture with you.